Now, in science, we, we scientists propose theories. Some are true and some are false. Dr. Jonathan Wells has earned two PhDs, one at Yale and one at Berkeley, in science. He is the author of the groundbreaking book, Icons of Evolution. Darwin proposed a good theory, which I think has turned out to be largely false. Uh, that's not to reflect on Darwin, but I do think it reflects on people who nowadays teach his theory as though it were an established fact. Though Darwinian evolution is being attacked on many scientific fronts, we will look at three major areas where it falls short. First, there is the fossil record. You can take examples of ancient creatures, apes that once walked the earth, and you can take an example of a human being, fossils from a human being, and you can look at those two side by side, and I'll say, where is the evidence that one became the other? There is no evidence. What we see is two different similar, maybe in some ways, fossils that represent two different kinds of animals. Did life arise, as evolutionists say, gradually, or did it arise abruptly? If you look at the fossil record, you will see that organisms appear abruptly without transitional forms, and these are found in the oldest rocks from the Cambrian period. They suddenly appear in the fossils in what is called the Cambrian explosion. There is no progression. Ann Coulter is the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, Godless. One third of her book is devoted to exposing Darwinism. What Darwin expected to find was all sorts of interlocking um, fossils. Slowly you have the mutation, the bloody battle for survival, and a new species arises from that. The fossil record looked nothing like that when Darwin promoted his theory. Um, but he said, just keep looking, keep digging. I'm, I'm sure the evidence will turn up. To the contrary, the evidence has come in um, showing quite the opposite, and the Cambrian explosion is a big part of that. We have all, all animal phyla right there appearing in the blink of an eye during the Cambrian explosion. But what about the prehistoric ape men we see in the museums and textbooks that are supposedly based on the fossil evidence? Dr. Ken Poppy, author of the new book, Reclaiming Science from Darwinism, is a 30-year veteran of teaching science in public schools in Colorado. What Darwinists are awful good at is taking like a single jawbone and constructing an entire creature. Uh, in one case, one of the, the, the famous mistakes of science, the Nebraska man, they dug up a pig's tooth and took that tooth that they suddenly assumed was of a prehistoric human and they built an entire race of people. Pictures that appeared in London newspapers showing them walking, uh, uh, walking in a prehistoric setting and later they finally gave the tooth to somebody who knew their, their dental work and they realized it was a pig's tooth and the whole thing collapsed. For a while Darwinists um, explained that there were no preceding the tran transitional fossils, preceding that because their evidence failed to fossilize. He <laughs> started to detect a pattern in their miracles. Oops, so the evidence that would support our theory just isn't there, didn't fossilize. The second area in which Darwinism crumbles is in its attempt to blur the important distinction between microevolution, small changes within species, and macroevolution, one major kind evolving into a completely new kind of creature. The evidence for microevolution is abundant. We see minor changes within species everywhere we look. The evidence for macroevolution is missing. The interesting thing here is that before Darwin, microevolution wasn't called evolution at all. It's just minor changes within existing species. Darwin didn't call his book How Existing Species Change Over Time. He called his book The Origin of Species. And for that, there's just about no good evidence at all. But evolutionists take evidence for microevolution, which can be found in abundance, and use it as proof of macroevolution, for which there is virtually no evidence. Creation scientist and author Ian Taylor from Canada hosts Creation Moments on more than 800 radio stations. What Darwin proposed was that any creature, given enough time and in different circumstances, would grow into another creature. That's macroevolution. Never been any evidence for it. Microevolution is nothing more than just variation within the species. The third area in which Darwinian evolution fails is in explaining the enormous complexity of biological structures, even at the microscopic level. 
No evolutionist has been able to propose a plausible way such structures could have arisen randomly. In other words, random chance alone could not have created life. Certainly before Darwin's day, most scientists had no trouble seeing design in the biological world. Dr. Michael Behe, Lehigh professor and author of Darwin's Black Box, elaborates further on the complexity of the human body, even down to the trillions of cells that make up our bodies. There are molecular machines which actually occur inside of cells, so they are really smaller than cells themselves. Uh, a good example of a, a molecular machine is um, the little molecular trucks which shuttle supplies from one part of a cell to another. No one has been able to fit uh, these machines, these molecular machines, into a Darwinian uh, framework. This is why Dr. Behe and other scientists talk about intelligent design. I consider myself right now to be what I call an intelligent design theorist. And that means that uh, from what I can see uh, in biology, a lot of systems have intelligence behind them. That it, they were not produced by random processes. Can you get a dictionary from an explosion in a printing press? Can you get a 747 from a catastrophe in an airplane parts warehouse? Uh, can you get the works of Shakespeare from the flying pen and pages at a printing press or something like that? We keep hearing about gaps in the theory of evolution. The whole theory is a gap. They've got nothing, nothing. They, we've been looking for 170 years um, through the fossil record or, for, or in the laboratory, mutilating, um, torturing fruit flies. Um, we've never seen one species come from another in the wild and in, in the laboratory, looking for the fossil evidence. And to the contrary, the fossil evidence not only is what shouldn't be there, not there, but what shouldn't be there, is there. Ironically, Charles Darwin himself said, if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. Nearly 150 years after Darwin wrote The Origin of the Species, after more than 100 million fossils have been cataloged in museums around the world, Darwin's theory has indeed broken down. As one prestigious French scientist put it, quote, evolution is a fairy tale for adults. Evolutionist Eugenie Scott of the National Center for Science Education declared, it is not fair to mislead students by pretending that discarded ideas are still viable. We only confuse students by presenting special creation and evolution as if both were equally scientific and as if scientists were still trying to decide between them.